Western monotheisms, Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Today we're going to be talking about the religions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And we're going to start out with the religion of Judaism. Here is Judaism's greatest hero, Moses, the lawgiver. Here is Jesus, Christianity's greatest hero. And here is Muhammad. Muhammad's pictures are much more difficult to find than Jesus or Moses because in Islam it is wrong to depict people or animals in religious art. Another thing to remember about these Western monotheisms is they're not actually from the West. They originate in the Middle East and Jesus nor Moses are white. The original Jews are Abraham and Sarah. They are husband and wife, and they live in Ur, which is in modern-day Iraq. Most of this area, Mesopotamia as it's called now, when referring to this historical period, was populated with polytheists, people who believed in more than one god. The first thing that makes the Jews stand out is they worship one god, who, who they believe created the universe and everything in it. Abraham is supposedly the first person to talk to this one God, and God tells Abraham, the story goes, to move his family out of Ur, and God will guide them to the promised land, which is going to be Israel. Along the way, some other important people come into the picture, particularly Hagar, Ishmael, here, and Isaac, here. The first problem that Abraham experiences with Sarah is they can't bear a child. God tells Sarah to allow Abraham to hook up with Hagar, their servant. And Hagar will bear Abraham the son that he wants. And here we have one of the most important developments in Western monotheism, and that is a, a patriarchal society. Patriarchal societies are societies dominated by men, and Jewish society becomes dominated by men, as does Christian and Islamic. Essentially what happens is Abraham gets to bear a son with Hagar, and then God rewards Sarah for allowing this to happen by then allowing Abraham and Sarah to finally conceive a child who is here Isaac. And Isaac is going to be the heir to all of Abraham's fortunes and to the lineage of Judaism. In one famous and interesting Bible story, Abraham's faith in God is tested and obedience to God is tested when God asks Abraham, as you can see in this picture, asks Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac to God, which Abraham dutifully attempts to do before he is stopped by this angel when God realizes that Abraham is true to God and allows Isaac to live. Ishmael and Hagar are sent away and they are dispossessed of, of any possibility of becoming Abraham's heirs. And in return for that, they are also rewarded with wealth and power and many offspring. And eventually, According to Islam, Ishmael has a descendant named Muhammad. But we'll have more on that when we talk about Islam. Here we see an ancient map of the area we've been talking about and a modern map, the Middle East. Here's Ur. This is where Abraham and Sarah were supposedly from, and they travel all the way across Arabia to Canaan, the Promised Land, here, which is modern-day Israel. And you can see now that Canaan, Israel, is going to be a very important holy site to the Jews and the Christians and Muslims because they all worship the same God and have many of the same holy books in common. The last leaders in Judaism we'll talk about are Moses, Saul, David, and Solomon. Of these, the most important is probably Moses. Moses is the lawgiver, and by that we mean that according to the Bible, Moses, after he frees the Jews from their slavery in Egypt, receives these, 
the Ten Commandments from God. And essentially, God says, if you guys follow my rules, then I will reward you with wealth and power and status and many offspring for many, many years to come. And this idea that humans and God can have a pact and that God will actually honor humans if the humans follow these rules is is new. For the most part, in this area, gods were seen as, as angry and spiteful and not just towards humans. And the most humans could hope for was that if they sacrificed the right things and they performed the right rituals, that the gods would not send famine or plague or tidal waves or any of these other awful things which oftentimes happen to folks in this region. So this idea that God and people can have a pact is new, and that people should live by a moral code for the sake of their God is also new. And this is really what the Jewish contribution is to modern society. And this is why many, many modern states and older states have laws that are essentially based on these Ten Commandments um, and those that adopt Christianity as well. Sometime after Moses leads the Jews out of Egypt, the Jews find themselves fighting for their promised land with the Canaanites, the land called Canaan, the Canaanites, the people that lived there, and they were none too pleased that the Jews wanted to move in and take over their land. So the Canaanites fought fiercely, and the Jews come to be led by their three great kings, Saul, David, and Solomon. During their rulership, Israel, the land of the Jews, achieves its greatest wealth and power until modern times, after World War II, when the Jews are given Israel again for the second time in their history, this time by the United Nations. And then they have to fight for it in several wars against the Arab armies who would like the land back. So, of all these people... David is probably the most famous because he was sculpted by Michelangelo. Solomon was the most powerful Jewish king. Solomon builds a beautiful temple to God, builds a more beautiful palace for himself, taxes the people so heavily that eventually, soon after his death, they revolt and Israel is split forever until, like I said, recent days when they were given the land back by Britain and the United Nations following World War II. Solomon is here in this picture. Once again, we have our map here, and here, Egypt, this this is where Moses led his people out of, across the Sinai Desert, and here, in the Sinai Desert, is where he climbs Mount Sinai and gets the Ten Commandments, and then his predecessors, sorry, not his predecessors, those who come after him, Saul, David, and Solomon, then unite this kingdom of Israel. This is obviously a modern map here with, with Israel in the modern Middle East, but it's essentially the same land. Here we have the Ten Commandments of Moses, the covenant between the Jews and God. You have four laws about how the people are supposed to interact with God. You have no other gods before the one God is what the first one says. That means you don't worship any other gods. Pretty straightforward. The second one, you shall not make any graven images of God. No idol worship. So you can't have any statues that you're going to worship or any pictures that you're going to worship. It's okay to have pictures or statues, but you can't worship them. Third, don't take the name of God in vain. Don't use the name of God in swear words, as you often hear people do. Keep the Sabbath day holy is number four. That means worship God on Sunday, don't do other work on Sundays. The last six here have to do with man's relationships with each other. And these are supposed to set up a more peaceful and prosperous society. And once again, remember, the idea is if man and women obviously honor their compact with God, then God will reward them Um, with wealth and and many descendants. So honor your mother and your father. Do what they say. The foundation for any stable civilization is kids listen to their parents. Thou shall not kill. I've seen better translations of this commandment as thou shall not murder. There's lots of killing that happens in the Old Testament of the Bible. Much of it considered justified by the Jews. The idea is you don't murder innocents. 
Also, don't commit adultery. Don't sleep around on your spouse or with other people's spouses. Don't steal, so the beginning of property laws. Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. That means you don't say things about your neighbor that aren't true, particularly testifying to other people. And then don't covet. And don't covet essentially means don't want very badly the things that your neighbors have. Don't desire their wives, their husbands, or their stuff. Here, we have the Western Wall of Solomon's Temple, which still stands today in Israel. Very nifty, you can still go there and see it, and many Jews like to go there and pray, although the land is still, as we know, hotly contested between the Muslims and the Jews. So in summary, the history of the Jews and then of the Christians and then of the Muslims is going to create lots of problems here in the Middle East as this holy land is considered holy to the Jews, to the Muslims, and to the Christians, all because they refer to the same holy books in the history of their religion. The Muslims take this over from the Christians the Christians fight for it again and briefly hold it during the Crusades in the Middle Ages. It is then held by the Muslims for hundreds of years until the Jews are invited back after World War I by the British. The British, after World War II, then transfer power of Israel, leadership of the state, to the Jews, which is then okayed by the United Nations. And there has been fighting there ever since. Other things to remember about Judaism is it introduces into religion a rule of law, that if man follows God's law, man will be rewarded, and you have a patriarchal society, a society dominated by men where women essentially become property, and we see the ramifications of this right through to today in America. And historically, it's very important to remember that the Jews are the first monotheists. They worship one God, and this is revolutionary at the time. It's also why the Jews were some of the most discriminated against folks all throughout ancient times. They would not worship other folks' gods, that something that other people took as a common courtesy. When you went from town to town or place to place, you gave offerings to other folks' gods. This was not okay on, based on the Jewish religion and leads to them being discriminated against. These are the sources that I use to get all of my pictures. For the information, I used predominantly World History, Perspectives on the Past by D.C. Heath. Also, I looked at the Bible, many other historical texts over many years, and not to mention Wikipedia. So thanks for listening.